Big Boar Barbecue presents Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV with Dan the Voice Diker, Billy Doc Niles, and Paul the Statman Riker. Brought to you by Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem, in La Crosse on 3rd Street downtown, and George and Gillette Street. Big Boar Barbecue, now that's a mouthful. By Cary Heating and Air Conditioning, your residential specialist, serving the La Crosse area since 1929. Cary Heating and Air Conditioning. Welcome in, race fans. Seven Rivers Racing, KQEG TV, brought to you by Big Boar Barbecue, Kerry Heating, Air Conditioning, and Fanserena.com, along with Billy Doc Dials and Radio Man Dan Diker. I say we just dive right into this week's program. Yep, and more interviews from uh, the 2018. Uh Lacrosse Fairground Speedway Awards Banquet. And here's the uh, Eckleberg Race Team, minus Kim. What a better fitting way to kick off the year uh, than to bring the Eckleberg Racing Clan on as uh, these three and one in the wings has uh, been phenomenal over the years. They've won a lot of awards here across the board. And I think, John, we've had you guys on the, the very first program at least five or six years in a row. Yeah, I think so. We've uh, pretty much every year, I think at least a, a couple of us, if not all of us, have been on, on the show with you. Kurt Eckelberg, John Eckelberg, uh, Mandy Eckelberg, and Justin Mulliken. Where's mom at? We got to give Kim some props. Kim's over yapping away in the background. She's Kim Eckelberg, we're going to release her new nickname on night number one of races <laughs> this year. So be prepared in the grandstands to watch me run down the stairs. Uh, Eckelbergs and Mulliken, how was the winter? It's been busy already. There's. Uh there's uh, been, been work getting done on all of the cars already, and um, really haven't taken a whole lot of a break um, since, the off, or since the season ended. And uh, probably the earliest we've ever started working on cars uh, has been this year, but a lot of work being done. Um, rebuilding one for Mandy and um, going through uh, my late model since it, it was new to us midway through the season last year. And um, so there's, there's a lot of work to be done yet, but we've, we've accomplished a lot already as well. Got to start with Kurt because if memory serves me correctly last year was your first complete year away from racing and you had a chance to dive into not one two but three different cars was that was the pits everything you thought it was going to be full-time and more i i really <laughs> i really enjoy the pits uh racing was awesome for the 29 years i did it 30 years whatever it was but not being able to watch my kids race and now justin too it was killing me i mean jonathan i race the features together most of the heats together but uh never got to see mandy race hardly at all other than maybe the last few laps of her feature and when she wrecked real bad two or three years ago i said that's it i'm done i need to be there in the pits for my kids jonathan um kind of a change of a late model for you towards the latter part of last season but it seemed as though it was something that you liked jumping into bill niles old 54. Yeah, I had Billy Doc Niles' uh, old car, the lights and all, the red and uh, blue flashing lights still worked. and They did. Uh, we made mention of yes. it turn four. So I uh, had some uh, some tributes, I guess you could say, to him in the, in the start of our features. But yeah, about, well, not even quite midway through the last season in June, um, I had a pretty nasty wreck and... and to pretty much totaled my my late model that I had started the season with so we needed a replacement and uh, and Bill still had his old late model so um, we were pretty lucky there to, to acquire that and, and it's 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 been comfortable and um, I'm excited to be able to go through it a little bit more this winter to to get it to where we need it to be of course the return of the great green melon machine mm -hmm. this year different paint job are you gonna go with the same paint scheme usually Dif you surprise me on social different, media different but it's yet to be determined um, lots of times last year I heard people roaming in the grandstands. My goodness, does Mandy Eckelberg look like she's got a hang of things now. Your qualifying times, starting areas, the way you were racing people and passing people. How comfortable did you feel? Because this goes back to the wreck out of turn four with the fire. I knew it was going to take a while to get that out of the back of your head, but last year you looked so comfortable. Yeah, this was my third or fourth season since that wreck, and I had a lot going through my head the years previous. Um, this year I had a lot of outside influence, people talking to me. Um, I did a lot of um, self-help reading type of things that were motivational and stuff, and I finally decided it's either time to figure it out and go, or it was probably time to step away. Sights on 2019? I'm beyond w's. excited. Getting yes. a couple W's um, here. We are building a 
basically a car from ground up. It was Justin's former car, so props to him. He's been doing a lot of great work on the car so far this year. I'm excited to see where it comes. Um, I have no doubt this will be my best season yet at the track, um, and I'm just excited to get out there and get started. Talking about building for the ground up, now last year was your first year actually building your car from ground up. Yep, that's correct. What did you think? It was fun. I'm ready to do it again this year. Now, when, when you do that, I mean, you buy somebody else's car, you don't know how many drivers have had that thing. And it, there's a speedway, there's at least five or six cars that have been five or six owners, so they all put their own little flavor in there, their own little trickeries in there. You had a chance to actually watch yourself from ground up. What did you learn um, that you did maybe good or did bad that you can take into 2019? For the most part, it was all pretty good. I am going to be taking a sawzall to it here pretty soon and redoing quite a few things. So, What are you, lo- what are you looking for to 2019? Um, an improvement on last year. Less wrecks, more consistent, and hopefully a couple wins. This was also a good base year for, I mean, you've been friends with these guys for so long, uh, to, to have the tutelage of Kurt. They can actually watch everything in the pits and not have to race against you and go, you know, this, that, this. He could see everything. How much did you take from being with these guys last year? A lot. Uh, I couldn't do it without them, basically. I mean, it's a lot for one person to do it on their own. I did it for a lot of years. I couldn't do it in a late model, so without them, I wouldn't be here. So, Mandy, going into your old sportsman, that's going to be kind of deja vu-ish? A little bit, yeah. Going to give her some insights as to what you did to make it work? Yes, a little bit more than insights. The bar's already been set high. (laughs) There's nothing wrong with that. Um, Where'd you get the tan from? You look embarrassing compared to us whiteies that are up here. Sorry. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, Season gets underway faster than you know it, and I'm sure, Kurt, you guys are going to have one busy garage with not just one but two but three and uh, in hearing all the different viewpoints. Yeah, it's it's real full right now. We moved Jonathan's car into Kim's bay tonight. Uh, Kim don't give up her bay of the garage very easily, but uh, he was going to be home for the weekend. We needed to get some work done on it while he's there. So Justin and Mandy's have been on the other end of the garage being worked on, and it'll get chaotic, but uh, hopefully when Mandy's goes to paint, we'll be able to clean up a little bit and uh, organize and get everything back in order so that we can move on until race season. And one more thing with you, this was one of your first times that Kim was actually in the pits a whole lot more. Mm-hmm. Of course, she sells raffle tickets, does a great mm-hmm. job at that. But I would, I know where, where her normal perch is up in the grandstands, mm-hmm. and it was weird not seeing her up there quite a bit. Did it feel good to have the wife down there watching what's going on with all three rather than mm-hmm. up in the grandstands? Or I, I, I maybe enjoy, not? I enjoy having her down there. She's a little more spunky than the rest of us at times, and we got to rein her in once in a while. Let's let the drivers take care of their own problems. You don't need to be over there helping them. Just let that happen. But, no, I – and she's come a long ways, too. I mean, uh, we got, Craig Kohlmeyer helped us for many, many years, mm-hmm. and um, he decided that he has too many kid commitments now and couldn't come back, and we, we were short of body. And I said, Kim, you're going to have to come down more than you, you normally do, you know. And, and it turned out pretty good. She learned a lot this year. She She's our tire lady pretty much on all three cars, and um, we can depend on her. You know, when, before we uh, cut to a break here, Paul Reichert's one recommendation for Kim Eckelberg in the pits this year, bring cookies. Yeah, she tries to make something. I don't know if this last year was so successful, but with Henderson's, we're, well, Henderson's still do pit next to us, but she'd bring them cookies every week. That's, you know, kind of her thing. So, Paul, you just got to get down to their pit earlier. <laughs> before they're e- gone. Yes, before they're gone. Eckelberg Racing, uh, you guys have been such a great tribute to the program here. Great friends of the program every single year we've had it on the year. Uh, continued success to all of you guys and Justin Mulliken. And uh, I can't wait to yell out some W's with you three this year. I, I think they'll all get some. I hope. I think all of them are capable of doing it. Uh, hopefully we can put our money where our mouth is on the track. Yes, Kim was there. She was standing behind the camera with suds in her hand. I have breaking news from the Eckelberg camp. I was, uh, you know, practice got rained out last Saturday, so I stopped into their shop. Congratulations to Jonathan and Amy Eckelberg. They're going to be parents. Ooh, look at that. Now he's going to take two years off racing and blame it on that. <laughs> Let's not hope so. Coming up, uh, we've got more uh, awards banquet interviews for you. Our next driver ran Thunderstocks last year. This year, a sportsman. John Groskopf next on Seven Rivers Racing. 
You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Are you ready for the ultimate platter challenge? Jerry here at Big Boar Barbecue. Our ultimate platter is loaded with pork, brisket, chicken, ribs, three sides, and four slices of bread. If you can eat it all, it's yours free. I'll even give you a certificate for another one you can share with your friends. So how about it? You ready to take the challenge? Stop by, check out the rules, and dig in. And oh yeah, that's a mouthful. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is built to a higher standard so you can focus on the problems in your life that actually matter. Hey, Dave. Like giving Jeff his ladder back before he takes it back. Or where to put the food when you both get the groceries. Or the doggy door that just became a raccoon door. Whatever you're worrying about, it won't be this. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning, built to a higher standard. Carry Heating and Air Conditioning, your 2018 American Standard Building a Higher Standard Award winner. Call Carry today for your free estimate. Welcome back, race fans. Severus Racing, KQE GTV, along with Billy Doc Nows, our radio man Dan Docker, our next guest. Stopped off at the Lacrosse Speedway Awards Banquet, and Billy Doc Niles, he's going from the short track to the big track this year. That's right, John Groskoff, he's going to tell us all about his plans, but man, check out John's uh, vest. So cool. And uh, we want to welcome in a guy that's never been in the program before, that made some noise last year, not only with his racing style and the look of his Thunderstock, but he's been a busy man during the off season. And that would be a Thunderstock driver. Well, now hobby stock since they changed the name, uh, John Grosskopf. John, how are you? I'm doing good, Dan. Thank you. Now, before I met John, his Missy Kay, I've been I've known her forever at the at the Speedway. So there's the Grosskopf connection and all the other family connections. So good to see you guys here tonight. Uh, Good 2018 run. I love the style of the of the Thunderstock you had last year because everyone else is pretty much battered and beaten, and they bring them back year after year. You had a pretty nice looking ride. Yeah, it stayed pretty decent for most of the season, I'd say. But yeah, it's put a lot of time, a lot of money in the thing to make it look good. Had a lot of good sponsorship, so kind of had to present ourselves pretty well. Now, according to Paul and Doc, um, they were there. The Doc was racing at the track. And Paul was a spectator when you used to race years ago, so I wasn't there. Uh, and there was a lot of excitability saying, wow, Groskopf's coming back. There's a name that just came out of the woodworks after. Uh, how long were you off from racing? Um, technically, it was 17 years Holy, that I was off. What, what gives you the spark after 17 years? Coming back with my daughter, we came back just to spectate. And 22 years passed running, it kind of... A little, little fire. Got the little itch there again, huh? And a little bit of rumor. I was a little too old to come back and do it. So was it like falling off of a bike, getting on, and taking off on a bike again? You know, in some ways, I guess, Dan, it, it, it came back. But the technology that's out there and the different, uh, there's a different pattern to run out there now. It's a different groove. You know, usually, years ago, it was the outside three wide. That's all it was. Right. And, uh, now, I, I suppose with less cars, it seems like it's a little bit faster. Uh, years ago, you know, we had 40 cars plus, and you had to push oh, away I've from the back pictures. to the front. Yeah. So that driving style was a little bit different. So to adapt to that, it was it was kind of a it was a huge change to come back. Yeah, it was totally different. Did you have any goals set for your? I mean, obviously you've been out there for so long prior. Did you have any goals set for 2018? Besides just finishing races? I did not. I had no goals. Um, I kind of got with Adam Moore and, and uh, just told him my challenge was to, to run with him. And that was pretty much the only thing I had all season. And unfortunately, we really didn't get to run together other than the one night he took first in the feature. I took second. Right. That yep. was it. Other than that, uh, he was off a lot this season. And when he was running, my car wasn't. So uh, we had a good year. It was fun. It's funny, I got to find out where John lives on French Island. Uh, for the longest time, I'd see a Thunderstock sitting there. I'm like, I wonder whose car that is and who that guy is. Well, now, during the winter time, I've only seen that one sitting there. I think I saw a Modified sitting there. I saw a Sportsman sitting there. You have been a busy beaver during the winter so far. Yeah, we've got, um, actually, we've got three Sportsman cars right now that we're building. So how many are going to be on the track? I don't know. So we say, got three of them. We, we, don't, we like to do the breaking news on this program, but we're not going to ask you who's driving those, but it's got to be nice to have a little cavalry behind you there in the yard. 
We do. And again, that's good sponsorship. But uh, yeah, we bought we bought one of the good cars that ran last year. I bought one that uh, Rosendahl's old metric. We bought that. Oh, okay. That's totally rebuilt now and done. And uh, that was a strong car. That's a good car. Yeah, that's a very nice car. But I bought. Uh, Mr. Secor's car. Yep, I was going to say. I wasn't going to say the name until yeah. you did. But there, there's another one that that could have been a contending car. I mean, because he had some yeah, times on Saturday nights last year. That that's a very nice car. Yep. We uh, we tore it all apart, redid some stuff, put a brand new body on it, and we're going with a 602 crate in that. So it should be pretty live. If I can drive it, it'll do good. So uh, how do you decide which one to drive next year? Just flip a quarter every Saturday morning. <laughs> Whichever one runs fast is what we're going to do. Yeah. And are you, you going to run Toma at all? Um, undecided. Okay. Undecided. I don't know. Uh, with the gear change and everything, I suppose we could. But we'll have to get set up for it if we're going to. Maybe the third car will be a Toma car. It's kind of hard to say. What, do you, what goals are you looking at in 2019? I mean, obviously you got your feet wet again last year. You got the spark back. Uh, I'm sure you'd like to get a track championship. Um, yeah, I guess for me to, to want that is probably far-fetched this year. My goal this year is going to be for Rookie of the Year. I don't know who I'm contending against, but um, I can say they better come pretty solid if they're coming. And that'll be kind of weird for you because when you left racing, it was probably Hobby Stocks. Yeah. Then they went to the Thunder Stocks, and now they're back to Hobby Stocks again this year. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my, all three of my cars sold. One went to Rockford. And uh, and Lance Berger has the other two cars that I had. So whose car doesn't Lance have? <laughs> uh, he kept messaging me. He wanted that car, so uh, we made a deal. So yeah, we're we're sitting good this year. We're gonna go for Rookie of the Year, whether we get it or not. I don't know, but we're set to do it. So now there is another goal for 2019, and that's to get Missy K to sing the national anthem. <laughs> I've been yeah. on here for three years. What, three years, four years about this now? Yeah. Yeah, she needs to come out and sing. I heard she's got a great voice. Well, she can when she wants to. Yeah. Well, wait till, you're, we'll wait till after you graduate. You'll feel more older and responsible, then you're going to come sing for us. <laughs> she's such there a treat go. in the grandstand. John yeah. Groskopf going to be fielding quite a many cars this year. Uh, I was good to see you back. I know Billy and and uh, and Polly give me some of your past history of uh, of how you used to race back in the day. And Billy was pretty impressed that you just hopped back on that horse and, and rode it around. Yeah, we do, we look back on it now, and and I did speak with Bill yeah, at your party, at your birthday party, and um, I guess it's kind of an eye opener to. To realize what we did last year, we didn't. I guess the championship really wasn't that far out of. Reach. It wasn't. It wasn't. We had, were. Uh, we were wondering it at one certain point of the season. There was you there come. was ten wins this season we got, and nine DNFs. And we still were with, what two hundred points of the championship. Right. So, did I go out with them goals? No, I didn't. I just went out to see if I could do it. I want to thank John for joining us. Can't wait to see what he does on the big track this year. See, he wore a vest. Last week, Brandon Lemoyne had the red suit on. Mm -mm. It's all because they come on my show. Then the banquet ceremony is secondhand. By the way, nice tie. I liked it. Oh, you liked that? That was, that was a really cool tie, Diker. Got it three days before the banquet, uh, <laughs> Speedway banquet. That was, a, that was a fun one to wear. Final guest coming on the program today. Last year won two track championships at two different tracks in two different divisions. Billy's going to tell you about it next on KQEG TV. You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Are you ready for the ultimate platter challenge? Jerry here at Big Boar Barbecue. Our ultimate platter is loaded with pork, brisket, chicken, ribs, three sides, and four slices of bread. If you can eat it all, it's yours free. I'll even give you a certificate for another one you can share with your friends. So how about it? You ready to take the challenge? Stop by, check out the rules, and dig in. And oh yeah, that's a mouthful. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is built to a higher standard so you can focus on the problems in your life that actually matter. Hey, Dave. Like giving Jeff his ladder back before he takes it back. Or where to put the food when you both get the groceries. Or the doggy door that just became a raccoony door. Whatever you're worrying about, it won't be this. 
American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning, built to a higher standard. Carry Heating and Air Conditioning, your 2018 American Standard Building a Higher Standard Award winner. Call Carry today for your free estimate. Welcome back in, race fans. It's Big Boar Barbecue presents Seven Rivers Racing right here on KQEG TV. And Dan, we got one more interview left over from the awards banquet from 2018. Got a driver that tried to win three championships at two racetracks last year. He lost one at the Lacrosse Speedway by one point. He won the Street Stock Division at Lacrosse Speedway, and then the Six Shooter Division at the Thomas Sparta Speedway. Billy Doc Niles in the same car. Here's Matt Moore. Our next guest was one busy gentleman here in 2018, not only at the Lacrosse Fairground Speedway, at the Thomas Sparta Speedway as uh, it was championships galore and he's going to get another one as soon as we walk inside. He's your 2018 Street Stock Lacrosse Speedway champion and that's my good friend Matt Moore. Matt, how are you buddy? Pretty good. You cannot tell me to start 2018 you thought we were going to have this kind of a conversation at the end of the year. Yeah, I was definitely surprised. Uh, it was never in the plans but everything kind of fell in place and here I am. Of course, Matt is one of those that if you mention a street stock here at Toma or lacrosse, oh man, we got to watch what he's doing. Not the prettiest of cars, but it's what's inside and the little tricks you can learn within the parameters uh, that get you where you are. First off, let's talk a little bit about Toma. Um, at Toma, you were synonymous with the Super Hornets or the, the higher pressured, faster Hornets. Um, you kind of went to the street stock realm this year couple championships at Toma for you this year. Yeah, I had to had to step down from the four cylinders. It was costing too much money and I was actually going to going to retire like every race car driver ever says, but then I stumbled on my cheap Malibu and I had a lot of fun this year. And the thing is, I mean, it's the rules first off between Toma and Sparta cuz a lot of guys really want to run both nights. The rules are so comparable that it allows you to do that. Yes, the rule book is almost the same rule for rule with uh, very few differences. Um, talk about Toma. How much fun was that? Toma was a lot of fun. Um, it's where I turned my first lap ever. Always nice to pull your car out there. It's so close to home and support your hometown. And, of course, uh, got the championship out there. And you even, I think, the excitement behind what lacrosse had started with the sport, with the, with the street stocks carried over to where you were racing against guys at lacrosse Saturdays and you were racing against the same guys on Fridays. Yeah, it was, it was definitely fun to get used to the guys that you're running with. I mean, you, you know how everybody runs and you know who you can race with and who you got to watch out for. And again, you're one of those kind of guys that have known you for so long that if a, if a street stock guy came up at Toma or, or, or lacrosse, and had a question, you're not going to just kind of turn away. You're well, you're welcome to anybody to check out your car and learn little things, but not the secrets. Yep. Yeah, you always got to help them out. Um, if you can get them faster, then it makes you faster because not to sound mean, then they're not in your way. Now, Lacrosse Speedway, um, you nailed down the Street Stock Championship there, but more importantly, I think you had more fun in the minivan class at Lacrosse this year. Am I wrong? Yeah, the minivans was a lot of fun. Um, came up just two points short, and it came down to whoever won the last feature was going to win the championship. And I can honestly say that was the funnest race that I ever lost. And, of course, uh, Mr. Stanfield said the same thing. He said, "I don't whether I won or lost that thing, that was one of the funnest years I've ever had racing. Now, of course, your vans are six-cylinder, your street stocks are six-cylinder. You have an opportunity to work at a lot of auctions so you can find the cheap ones and know what you had to do. What was it about this van this year that you were pretty excited several times I came to the picture, like, man, I love this thing? Well, the van I had this year, I've had for a couple years, but uh, I got a new van for next year, and uh, I shouldn't be two points short next year. <laughs> He's talking the junk already. Make sure you write that quote down, Paul. We're going to use that. Later on in the year. So as we, as we talk about 2018, you were going to run lacrosse and Sparta. What were some of the goals you had? Obviously not to win almost three championships. Uh, my goals originally were just to race when I could and have fun. And I ended up committing to both tracks all year and taking home the championships at both. So 2019, what are we looking at? Or is it too early? You already told us you got a mean minivan. What are we looking at this year? Um, 2019, a minivan at lacrosse and part-time Toma in the six-cylinder car. 
So in, in La Crosse, Street Stock, do you have to step away for a year like the, some of the other divisions? Yes, I have to take this year off in the Street Stocks. So where's where's the, the championship uh, Street Stock car at? Right now it's sitting in my garage in my backyard. Um, probably ain't going to come out till the snow melts. Not that we have a lot, but it's not going to come out anytime soon. I'm surprised uh, people weren't banging on your door during the winter wanting to buy that thing. I've had a couple inquiries because I did list it for sale at the end of the year, but I told them once it got put away for winter, it wasn't for sale anymore. Uh, let's go back to Toma. You've been running there for a long time. Little boy cried wolf. Matt Moore's ready to go. The track's not going to run. Matt Moore's ready to go. We're going to run four races. Matt Moore's ready to go. We'll run half the season. Greg Oliver takes over last year. Nails down the track. Give us some of your thoughts on what it was like to run an actual full professional season at the Thomas Sparta Speedway. It was really nice. Um, Greg did a fantastic job, and I've been racing at Thomas since I was 16, and honestly, this was the best ran since I was that young. So I, my hats go off to Greg because he would really turned the place around. And, you know, that's what Greg wanted to do was get the first year. He even admitted to us, things are not going to be perfect the first year. That's the first time he's ever ran a track like that. Now that he's got some other pieces in place, he, he, he hit the learning curve. Would you expect, or at least I do, more positive things to come about this year at Toma? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, he, he ran a good show this year, so with what he learned, I, I can only imagine it can only get better. Talk about your sponsors uh, that helped you out in 2018. Of course, it's morephalesauto.com in Toma. I got that one pegged. Who else was helping you out? Um, we got Shaw's Auto Salvage and Warren's and uh, Gratz Auto Repair in Wilton. Matt Moore, two out of three championships this year at two different racetracks, was two points away from nailing down a third. And uh, he's got, you can tell the spark in his eye, he's got some things ready for 2019. Dan, I got to tell you, that's about as close to being dressed up as you're ever going to see Matt Moore. He was smelling good too. Usually he smells like of, of gas and oil and uh, has the bib overalls or a racing suit on. So uh, Matt dressed up quite nicely. Congratulations, by the way. Uh, that was a hard feat to do is win two of those six cylinder classes at two different racetracks. One point away from winning three. So it would have still came down to the last lap yep. against Rob Stanfield last year. Wow. Still a great season. Uh, nothing to sneeze about two track championships. Lacrosse Speedway, of course, opener, Frostbuster. You're going to see a lot of highlights, as we normally do, coming up on next week's program, being brought to you by Big Boy Barbecue, Curie Heating and Air Conditioning, and Fansarena.com. For the gone Paul Reichert, who is still not here yet. Nom, nom, nom. Billy Doc Niles, I'm Radio Man Dan Dogger. Thanks for joining us on KQEG TV. You've been watching Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV with Dan the Voice Diker, Billy Doc Niles, and Paul the Statman Riker. Brought to you by Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem, in La Crosse on 3rd Street downtown and Georgian's Alette Street. Big Boar Barbecue, now that's a mouthful. By Cary Heating and Air Conditioning, your residential specialist, serving the La Crosse area since 1929. Cary Heating and Air Conditioning. Thanks for watching Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV. At the D&D Diner, you can expect hometown meals, hometown service, and hometown prices. Hi, this is Dale with the D&D Diner in Sparta. Your new home for great food, cold beer, and fine wines. Whether it's a big breakfast, a tasty lunch, or traditional dinner, you'll find it on our menu. Whether it's Friday night fish dinners, Saturday night prime rib, or our many daily specials, your place for great food at fantastic prices is the D&D Diner in Sparta.